On today's show, the Flames torch UMass. We recap the game and we go in the fire with the LU quarterback room. Plus, Lady Flames field hockey looks to clinch the Big East regular season title and we hear from forward Jill Bolton. You're watching Flames Central. Let's go! Calendar may say we're in the midst of fall, but around here at Liberty University, we're entering championship season. Woo What's up? Welcome to Flame Central. I'm Matt Warner. She's Emily Austin. All right, Matt, we have a lot to get to. Conference titles on the line for some Liberty teams this past week. But first, of course, we have to start on the gridiron with Liberty football. Yeah, the Flames trying to close out the month of October with a win before entering the toughest portion of their schedule. The opponent, UMass, the result, one-sided. Flames fans taking the opportunity to sport their best Halloween duds at this ballgame. How about that? But before some of those fans could air up their Snoopy costume, the Flames already made a big play. First play from scrimmage, Deron Lowe with the interception. One play later, P.J. Green would take it in from 26 yards out for the score. Just like that, 7-0 Liberty. They weren't done. Three plays later now, Akeel Washington coming off the edge. The strip sack, Steven Sings would recover it. And then... How many plays later? One. One play later again, Demario Douglas taking it in on the fly sweep for the score. So two offensive plays, two TDs for Liberty to start Woo. the game. That's pretty efficient. The Flames are only getting started. How about this laser coming from the arm of Malik Willis to DJ Stubbs, a 60-yard touchdown strike. Emily will tell you more about this play in a moment. It was 21-3 Flames after that touchdown. Jumped to the middle of the second quarter. Now it's Willis again, this time finding Noah Frith, who would break free take off down the sideline for a 49-yard score. Liberty would lead 41-3 at the half, and Malik Willis finished with 307 passing yards, four TDs, and the guy in the banana suit was loving every second of it. <laughs> Second half was all about the future. Freshman quarterback Caden Salter escaping the pocket, directing traffic, and finding Brody Brum for the eventual touchdown. 47 yards rushing is also what Salter would add to his total on the day, as he was impressive. Meanwhile, fellow freshman Nate Hampton, he wasn't getting left out. He would complete one pass, but it was a long one. 63 yards to Caleb Coleman, and the Flames rolled to a 62-17 win, improving their record to 7-2 on the season. And Hugh Freeze, yeah, he was thrilled with that fast start. I don't know that I've ever coached a game that you had um, um, that few of defensive possessions and two plays and touchdowns, so I, I don't, that's pretty uh, – Maybe we can start the next few like that, too. That would be nice. But, uh, you know, we played really well today. And just, uh, man, really pleased, pleased to uh, get to seven wins and continue winning at home, making this a difficult place to play. We appreciate the fans and uh, them make, helping us make it a difficult place to play. Well, another week, another award update from Malik Willis. This time he was named a semifinalist for the Maxwell Award, which is awarded to the National Player of the Year. Willis is one of 15 players named to the list between November 2nd and November 20th. Coaches, SIDs, and selected media will vote on the award with the three finalists being named on November 23rd. Willis has accounted for 30 touchdowns this season, while also ranking in the top 10 in the nation in passing efficiency. No such thing as talking too much about Malik Willis with such a lopsided victory over UMass. Liberty and Willis created plenty of chatter across social media. So let's jump into this week's hearsay with EA. PFF College ranked the highest graded players at every position through week nine. And you won't believe it. This superstar quarterback Malik Willis. Yeah, he made the list. He's the top rated group of five QB with a 93.6 grade. The article highlights how his 11.3% big time throw rate it tops in the country. Okay, you saw the highlight just a few minutes ago with Matt. Another one of those jaw-dropping moments for me on the sidelines and everyone online, including ESPN NFL insider Phil Yates. He mentions that it's impossible to throw this ball any better. I would agree. And check this out. They even talk about Malik Willis on Get Up in the Morning. Mel Kuyper Jr. has Willis on his list for the QB race in the NFL draft, but he thinks there's no clear-cut number one. Anybody who tells you that, he says, is not accurate. Well, this guy, Todd McShay, has been saying Malik is the QB1 the entire season, so who knows? But we do know what Todd is doing this weekend, watching that matchup between Liberty and Ole Miss with two of the top three QBs. And finally, if you haven't seen it yet, be sure to head over to Sports Spectrum for Malik's awesome interview on his faith and following God during this crazy time with all this NFL hype. 
Yeah, a lot of good stuff there on Malik. Well, with three different quarterbacks having success for Liberty against UMass, it was the perfect week to go in the fire with the QB room. It's a group that's led by quarterbacks coach Kent Austin, and he gave us a look at the inner workings of what it takes to be a successful QB for the Flames. My role is to, first and foremost, is to, is to prepare our quarterbacks and develop quarterbacks. If you can't develop a quarterback fundamentally, it doesn't matter how good you are schematically. You know, as a play caller or a play designer, uh, if your quarterback can't play the game physically, you're going to lose. Come on, you know the drill. Let's go, let's go. Straight ahead, straight ahead. And then I'm sliding in to get my hip correct during my slide. Rhythm slide into the throw. Pivoting out, Millie. Yeah, that's it right there. That, that was your best one. Yeah, that one. I don't think a person can coach this position uh, thoroughly that hasn't ever played it. Certainly not as good as somebody that's played it because they just don't understand really what's required to play this position. It is a very, very difficult position to play. Make it smooth. Do not move in parts. How loose are we? We good? Everybody loose? Here we go. Hey, this throw is in cover four. This throw is right past the nickel Sam's ear. Hey, if, if he doesn't want to respect the out route and we start to outflank him, you are low to high on this. Come on, pop it around. And, hey, now, why don't you do that every time? Do one more. You're holding out on me, seven. You say you're not fighting your body, you fight your weight. That's why I throw the ball, Nate. Good, jump up, jump up, salt. Unfortunately, in football, it's a very different sport. It's not like basketball where you get tons of reps in a two hour practice or two and a half hour practice. Uh, we don't get a lot of reps. Out of boy, salt. Other side, other side, let's go, slide over, let's go. You're pivoting back on your back foot. He's not gonna yell at you, he's not gonna argue with you. That boy's gonna tell you the truth, he's gonna tell you what it is. And he's just that guy that's gonna be honest with you and try to get you as the best as you can be. Hit, hit, hit. Got him. Missed him. No, he got him. Wait, drop it in, 10. Good ball, don't change it. Nate, don't change it, good ball. Those reps are important, but that's only part of the puzzle. They got to watch a lot of film. They got to know how to watch film, uh, to watch film properly, to prepare, not just put on a cut up. Better watch that film. Or you're going to be out there not knowing what you're doing. That's like glasses with lenses. That's like, you know what I'm saying? That's like water and soap. You wash your hands. Uh, you need it. <laughs> it's not a, you know, pre it's not a like option. It's a prerequisite. Cover four and you're, and they're going to lock the receivers. So when you see the plays that we've got, it'll make sense to you why they're in. You'll see the corner drop. You see what I mean, Lee? So as he recovers, as he recovers, what kind of throw are we making here? Pole shot. That's exactly right. We're going to throw that, right? Let's just start this game. Let's see if he can play football on number three and number five. Y'all with me? It's playing out the plays, our game plan within the structure of, of what we're watching. And you know, you know right now, by alignment, we've got this guy beat. Look right at him, freeze him, and then we're going backside corner post, right? And it's a direct shot. See him? Do you see it? Yeah, he'll have to win, but who is that at number two for us? Oh. Right. Is that a good matchup for us? Does this guy run well? All good? All right, we'll see you guys out there. I've never been one really to get too nervous before a game because I try to focus and concentrate on my job because every game has a different complexion. My belief is most of the games are won at game time, they're won during the game. They'll give it to Green, hesitation. Your work during the week helps, but if they come out and do something completely different defensively, it doesn't really matter. Just like that, two plays from scrimmage and the Flames are on the board. I mean, it's the adjustments that are made during the game that, that win the football game and your player's ability to absorb that during the game and be able to go out on the field and execute the next time. Typically, when I get Malik on the phone, it will be in one of three areas. Uh, what happened in the previous drive? Two, what did you see? Why did you make the decision on this particular play the way that you made it? I need to know the why behind your decision making. And then third, what we're going to do next. Now Liberty has it third and nine. And we'll see what Kent Austin dials up here, co-offensive coordinator. Malik pulls it out, looking downfield. He's got a man, and it's caught. DJ Stubbs, see ya. Good job, good job, good job. Good job.
<laughs> that was a strike. It's really awesome to see a player grow in all areas of his life. And it pulls it out. He's looking downfield again. He's got a guy. Catch is made. Foot race inside the 10. Caleb Coleman takes it in. How about this? Yes, sir. I'm so happy for that boy. How about Great this? Throw. Great throw. Great throw. It's a team game. And, and the game's, you know, bigger than any one individual. Watching just that overall development, you know, with players is what I take away from the game as the, the most rewarding aspect. Uh, so cool seeing the reaction from the coaches oh, in the yeah. booth. We never get to see that. And also a great week to see these guys. You see these young guys get an opportunity. And you saw in that piece how Ken Austin pours into them, teaching them. And then they got a chance to go out there and play on the field and make it happen, and they took advantage. And remember, uh, Matt, th those guys, Hampton and Salter, yeah. they don't get that many reps in practice, sure. and they looked pretty good. So the future is definitely pretty bright for these Liberty quarterbacks. Yeah, great group, as we saw a lot of young talent in that quarterback room as well. All right, we're going to stay with football now, but jump to the other side of the ball for our top <laughs> moment from the past 50 years of Liberty Athletics. Yeah, this week we focus on a record-setting achievement that spanned the length of the field. October 22nd, 2011, Liberty visiting Charleston Southern for a Big South matchup. The Flames were leading 14-0 in the second quarter. Dixon on third down and long, over the middle, and it's picked off. Flames defensive back Kawan Lee corrals Malcolm Dixon's errant throw on the goal line, and the length of a football field later, he would stroll in the opposite end zone for the Liberty score. At 100 yards, it's still the longest interception return in program history and helped the Flames secure an easy October win in Charleston, South Carolina. Great moment. Hey, you know when you were little and your mom would get mad at you for waiting until the last minute to do something? Well, when you're a kid, it might not be the best idea. But in sports, it's pretty sweet. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a minute. When we look back at this intense Big East battle between Liberty and Old Dominion, the Lady Monarchs didn't waste much time getting on the board. A penalty on Liberty, six minutes in. Well, that would give Delphine Lejeune a penalty stroke opportunity, and that will give ODU a 1-0 lead early. Fast forward to the second quarter, and the Lady Flames' Lizzie Hamlet. She'll find the back of the net. Will that be the first and last goal of the day for her, Matt? Huh? Teaser? Maybe. Tie? Ball game at one. Final minute of the game, traffic in front of the net. Hamlet gets the goal with 39 seconds left on the clock. The Lady Flames win the game, and they win the Big East regular season title for the first time in program history. All right, well, after the victory, the award started rolling in for the number eight Lady Flames. One of the biggest honors came for Daniela Rhodes. She was named the Big East Offensive Player of the Year after leading all players in goals per game and points per game. Liberty also had a league best six players make the all Big East first and second teams. Rhodes, Dykema, Ritt City Audi Ocean, and Jill Bolton made the first team while Hamlet and Conley landed the second team honors. Well, speaking of Jill Bolton, she's the first player in program history to be named all Big East first team five times. In general, she's one of the main reasons for Liberty's success on the turf the last few years. Here's what she thinks about Lady Flames field hockey in her words. When people ask what I'll remember most about my time as a flame, I think I'll remember this field. For the last five years, it's been such a big part of my life. I know it's just a patch of turf, but it's been on this turf that I've made lifelong friends, where I've realized I could be a leader. It's a new day after this, it's a new day. It's where I put in hour after hour of work so that I could be my best and help this program be its best. I remember scoring my first goal on this field in 2018. A goal for Liberty. Jill Bolton, the freshman from Pennsylvania, scores her first collegiate goal. I had no idea that I'd go on to set the program record for goals. Shot score! But I do know that moment gave me the confidence that I could succeed. Those early days, it felt like we were building something special. So many close games that didn't quite go our way. Shot score! Stunned silence here in Lynchburg, Virginia. But we would keep coming back to this field. We weren't afraid of failure, and we weren't afraid to put in the work to overcome it. 
we all knew how close this program was to something special. Then, over the last two seasons, all that hard work had started to pay off. Many of those close losses have turned into memorable wins. First loss here today, and it's thanks to the Liberty Flames, 4-0 the win over North Carolina. And we've established ourselves as a top 10 program in the country. Here we go, here we go, here we go. It's been amazing to see what Liberty Field Hockey has become, and we're not done yet. Let's go! There's still more to be accomplished before my time as a flame comes to a close. People talk about legacies, and I've thought about mine. And while wins and goals have all been great, when people talk about my time at Liberty, I hope they say just one thing. She left it all on the field. Love hearing her perspective. All right, well, coming up, we hit the cross-country course with the Lady Flames, and Rhett joins us for Warm, Hot, and Fuego. Plus, the top plays from the month of October. Who will land the top honor? Find out. We're coming right back. You want to make a difference. You want to use your life to help others. Liberty University offers a state-of-the-art respiratory therapy program, which has never been more valuable. The field offers competitive salaries, flexible work environments, and most importantly, is an opportunity to use your life to help others. Find out how you can change the world at liberty.edu slash restherapy. Since 1971, Liberty University has had one mission, training champions for Christ. We've been at this for a while, and in the shadow of the Blue Ridge Mountains, we have grown to be a global force. Today, Liberty runs over 100,000 students around the globe, studying across 15 colleges and schools, and among them, over 30,000 military students. Across 700 programs of study, we train as one, nurses, artists, business leaders of the future and today. Together, we work to give back through service trips, local community work, and over 500,000 volunteer hours per year. And we play just as hard as we study with 20 NCAA athletic programs and 40 club sports teams. So who are we? We are Liberty University, and we train champions for Christ. What is your dream? Your calling? What's the path to get there? It might be clear, or you might still be figuring it out. But at Liberty University, we want to empower you through every chapter of your story. Here, you can discover not just how to do things, but why to do them. And you'll have opportunities to practice and excel across different fields. And that doesn't just end at the classroom door. Your strengths and interests can also fuel your calling, and they embody more than just the classes you choose. So at Liberty, you can train, perfect, find a team to call your own at every skill level. There's more to your story than just the destination. It's reinventing, discovering, finding you are not alone as you chase your dreams. And those dreams don't have to wait until someday. At Liberty, we unite through Christ to pursue things larger than ourselves to make a difference in both our communities and world, because in Him, we are able. So, what is your calling? Liberty University can fuel that calling, and your outcome will change the world. Welcome back to Flame Central. You know, if you've watched the show at all the past few weeks, you've no doubt heard us talk about the success of the Liberty Women's Cross Country Team. Well, that success would continue at the A-Sun Championship. The number 24 ranked Lady Flames would dominate their conference foes, claiming five of the top 14 finishers as LU claims its second straight A-Sun crown. Liberty was led by Callie Doan, who set the 5K program record with a time of 16 minutes, 57 and 4 tenths seconds. That was also the second fastest time in the meet's history. Along with the team win, Heather Zeeland was named the A-Sun Women's Coach of the Year. Matt, I like that walk and talk. You're one step closer to a cross-country race. All right, to the pitch we go. Men's soccer hosted conference opponent North Florida on Saturday. 
recorded a 4-1 victory over the Ospreys. It was a much needed W for Liberty, snapping a three game losing streak. Marco Mastrevsky netted two goals in the game. With the win, the Flames secure an A-Sun tournament berth and will look to play Stetson in the quarterfinal round. Brett McGibbon joins us now. Tweak to hammy on that little walk and oh, talk, yeah. you know? Yeah, my idea. Ice no down rub. Later. Yeah, right. No, no, no. <laughs> All right, time for warm, hot, and fuego. Top play player moment from the past week. Rhett, do we have a theme this week, or is it just greatness? It's just greatness, but we do have, you know, you think about him, fuego, that's right. fire. Yeah. I got a little lighter fluid for you. Oh. All right, if we go into the football game, this is the third series. Yeah. The Flames drop three oh, picks, but yeah. not Kevin Vu. <laughs> Kevin Vu. That boy, the senior cheerleader, had the moment of a lifetime. My favorite part about this is that yeah. after the catch, right here, he was like, good game, man. Gets a little That's slap, right. you know what I mean? Time good to stuff. Freaking them some yeah, love. yeah, that great job great... by Kevin. That was a fun moment in the game. One of the better yeah. catches in that ball game. That's All right, true. let's go to warm now. Yeah, Marco what do you got? Matrevsky on the soccer yep. team. In this game, you know, Emily just talking about, this is a must-win game for the Flames. If they want to make the A Sun tournament, they need to win this game. Marco, his first multi-goal game of his career, opened the scoring two goals. And the Flames have had a history of just having great midfielders that are able to create offense. Marco, one of those guys. I've been able to call some of the soccer games over the past few years. He's a guy that you always notice, and he just came up big in this game for this group, had a, a, a great showing, and it's gonna be fun to watch him over the next few years, a really talented player that the soccer team as a whole has had kind of like an up and down season, yeah. right? But, and you think of that sophomore woe, sometimes you have such a young group coming in second season, gets a little bit tougher. That's what's happened to them, but as they go forward, he's gonna be a central focus for this group. Yeah, no lack of yeah. talent on that roster yeah. for sure. All right, from warm, we go to hot. Hot, CJ Daniels. This yeah. catch he had really meant nothing in the ball game. They're already smoking, them, but what a catch. He is quickly becoming a top two wide receiver on this group, if no he doubt. isn't already. This catch so incredible. He does it with his right hand. You think he's gonna scoop it with his left, the way the ball is coming in, but somehow he corrals it with the right arm. A great possession receiver for the Flames, and he has just been so much fun to watch yeah. this year. A great B to Demario Douglas. Those two guys have just been fire all season long. There's a reason they call him Sticky. Yes. Those hands, he exactly. gets, he holds on to it. Yeah, and he did there. All right, sure. finally, in Fuego, the in Fuego moment or player this week is. Yeah, it's Callie Doan. She's just mm. had such a career at Liberty, and when time goes by and we look, you know, three or four years down yeah. the road, she is definitely going to be a Hall of Famer. Like, there's no doubt about it. Runner of the year this year, first team all conference, as you mentioned, she set the program record. 16 minutes, 57 set point, 57.4 seconds. Yeah, yeah it is. In the 5K, yeah. like, it takes me longer to, to eat dinner sometimes, you know, <laughs> and she's running a 5K. So she has just had a, an incredible career at yeah. LU. Great job by the cross country team. Great to see the ladies continue to roll. Yeah, and they, their season not yeah. done just yet. Yeah, Great sure. job by them. Great job by you, Rhett. Yeah, Appreciate thanks. it as yeah. always. All right, hey, still to come, we have the top five plays from the month of October. Spoiler alert, Malik Willis will be heavily featured. And that's when <laughs> Flame Central returns.
Hey, thanks for sticking around. These top plays of the month, they always creep up on me. I can't believe October's already over, but we have plenty of action to choose for in our countdown. Yeah, these plays are scary good see, because it's October. That was the Halloween month. The you were saying, yeah, so we're going to relive them for you. I hope you appreciate these plays. Let's just start with play number five. Let's do that. All right, the countdown begins with Lady Flame Soccer taking on Stetson. LU leading by two, but not for long. First attempt by Avery Belk is Sticks no good, with it. but somehow she taps it. To Lizzie Gordon, who gets the rebound and sinks it in the back corner. Lady Flames win this one three to one, and Gordon wins our top play number five. If at first you don't succeed, well, am I always telling you? Emily. All right, play number four. We go to number four. CJ Daniels, the one-handed grab against UMass. You can try to defend him. You can hang on to him. You can pull him down. It doesn't matter. The one hand snatches it. They call him sticky, and those sticky hands came through with a big play for our play number four this month. That defender was draped all over him like flowers on grandma's curtains. He forgot to read that well. Yeah. Play number three, staying on the gridiron, LU at UAB. Malik Willis is dodging defenders like he's oiled up in butter. Matt, buttered up. On. Wouldn't let's, that be buttered up? Let's try to count, you know, these defenders. All right, I can't count that high. It's a lot. I think Malik it was the 10th guy. Malik Willis to victory, 36-12. All right, play number two, no butter involved. We go to maybe the best team on campus, field hockey, and this would clinch the Big East regular season crown. Lizzie Hamlet under a minute to go to defeat Old Dominion. The Lady Flames already top 10 in the country for the first time ever get the Big East regular season championship. Congrats to all the Lady Flames for all their hard work. We are already at play number one, and you butter believe it. It's Malik Willis and the Flames at North Texas. This is a 20-yard pitch, Matt Warner, not a throw, a pitch. Backhanded. Backhanded to TJ Green. People across the internet have been watching football for decades, haven't seen this before. Absolutely remarkable. Willis, surprise, surprise, takes the top play number one prize. All right, well, look at that. We are out of time, no, no, so no, no need no, to cover no, 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 our... No, no, not out of time yet. We've got the Flames Fantasy League update. Oh. You would like to skip that. Can we take a look at what we're doing in the Flames Fantasy this week? Remember, sure. Emily, Rhett, Joe Yock, and I all pick our teams. Our teams. Five players. We score it each week like fantasy football, and I'm running away with the lead. 392. Here's some news, though. Rhett McGibbon, he has mm. solidified himself as yeah. number two. And Emily had a tough week, only nine points. So there you go. Had to well, get that in there. At least I'm not Joe Yock. Yep. He doesn't even know who's on his team. Be sure to subscribe and download our podcast and check out some of our stories on our website. Yeah, LibertyFlamesCentral.com. We hope to see you right back here next week, and we hope you'll check out all of our stories online.